Now, the rest of the story. All right. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to go over really quick uh, what I all had to do to get the corn planter ready to be put away for the winter, for the year. Uh, just a quick go over because, well, I don't know how many other channels or how many other people really go over what it takes to put stuff away. I don't, I don't really think it hurts to at least talk to you guys a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, I got the pressure washer out and I went through, did something that probably isn't approved by some people, but I actually stood on top of the seed boxes and walked across and I started at the top and started working my way down as far as washing everything off. So when you start up here, all the dirt and dust from the top and you just go right down to the closing wheels and the gauge wheels and everything else like that. It is not perfect. Uh, I never said I was uh, going to have it squeaky clean and everything else like that but oh if you guys want to see this is one of the things why you got to keep a lookout on your uh, post season cleanup right here got a bearing that's going out and as far as closing and all that other happy stuff well all of our corn is coming up and all of our corn looks not to brag, but I think our corn looks pretty awesome. So, jokingly, I'm gonna say we're gonna leave this. I'm just gonna mark it down as something to keep an eye on and run it for another three or 400 acres. And then when it completely falls apart, I'll change it. That would be dry humor. I'm gonna go ahead and either go ahead and fix this yet before we back it away in the shed, or I'll just write it down and put it on the the front of the corn planter. I've done that before just to make sure that you're getting everything that needs to be fixed at least written down or noted so um, I went through all the closing wheels since we are talking about the closing wheels I had all of the closing wheels were set in the highest setting especially for the last day that we were planting it was weren't terrible conditions uh everything else that we planted from our soybeans to about 90 percent of the rest of our corn uh, was set on the second to last setting but when you go to put it away for the year you take the tension off the springs because you don't want to i just said don't want to lose tension uh, those do like to break every once in a while too we replaced one of those last year um, but the biggest problem we've had with this planter is actually the fertilizer system and not the system in itself it is actually these seed firmers because they like to hang down. Of course, it's just the nature of them. They hang down and when the planter is folded up, they like to catch and they drag themselves back like that. And then you pinch in between the, the opening, the seed openers and um, create a mess. A little bit of dirt came off the top of it. Uh, this one is actually about the worst on each side, the third one in. Uh, we actually put uh, bungee cords on it in season. Uh, when we're going from field to field and that's why it's kind of pried up but even with it being pulled up like that it will still sit right in the seed trench anyway so uh, so it's always good to have a couple of those on hand i think we replaced two of them in season uh greased it but after i got done pressure washing it washing it, i went through did the closing wheels greased everything up went through and I hit all of the chains, the roller chains with that synthetic John Deere uh, lubricant. And I don't even have it in the milk house anymore, but I went through and covered everything with a pretty healthy dose of it. Not 100% surefire guaranteed way that I should be saving the roller chains. Some people say I should take them off and soak them in diesel fuel for the season or for the rest of the year. No, it's definitely something to consider going forward but there is a very small slight potential chance that I'll have to change them next year anyway uh, just the fact that the actual seed the roll chains for all the that runs all the seed uh, those actually only ran us a couple hundred bucks to change and if I have to go through and change them again next spring I will but I think what actually burned me last time is that the year before last, where they were, oh, before they were giving us issues, I didn't hit them with 
any of the uh, the lubricant so I coated them with water and then I left it set so what happens when you get shiny metal covered in water it rusts so it's kind of my own fault otherwise we really don't have that many problems with with roller, roller chains like that um, got all that covered and the other thing what, uh, that I had to do largely just because well, I would have done it regardless, but a little bit more so this year is because for those of you that are catching up with the rest of the story or just tuning in, this is the first year in the history of ever since we've done soybeans that we actually started and finished our soybeans before we did corn at all. And when you're doing corn and going from corn to beans, we have fertilizer in this tank. And then what I typically have done we've always done in the past, even when we were running solid fertilizer, just the regular dry fertilizer, uh, we would actually just turn the rate down and run it out lightly onto our soybeans. Hasn't given us any issues on our beans. I don't exactly know if it's given us a big yield boost because I never really kept track of it too close, um, but at least that way it cleaned out the tank good enough that it allowed us to um, rinse it out at the end of the season really well. Uh, this year we actually ended up draining it out into the cultivator and then everything that I didn't quite get out of it into the cultivator, which was maybe maybe three, four gallons at the very most. I flushed it with water and I cleaned out both these filters, which I don't know how it does it. I mean, everything is clean and everything when we go to use it, but this strainer had a little bit of crud in it coming from the tender tank, which it is what it is, but then this little guy catches a lot of crap. This thing is about a third the way full when I went and cleaned it out. It does have water in it right now. Uh, the plan is, because we are definitely in a region that does freeze rather hard in the winter, uh, I'm going to go through and flush it with uh, radiator, not radiator fluid, uh, the RV winterizer. So it's about six or eight gallons of that it takes to to run through the whole system, basically just to make sure that it isn't gonna freeze solid and break any of our fertilizer lines or our metering system. Um, this will, by the time it goes through and flushes through all this, all through the lines and everything, just to make sure that we're happy that it's not gonna freeze up and destroy something, which it isn't the end of the world if you have to rerun one of these lines. I mean, it wasn't actually all that terrible to do it in the first place, but in excess wear and tear and whatever else. Um, also, last but not least, I haven't done it yet, but I do have air in the airbags yet, which it must have a slow leak because we were running just over 100 pounds. And all the airbags will be, well, all the pressure will be pulled out of the line, so the airbags will really shrink in size here so they're not under constant pressure for the rest of the year. Uh, what I'm gonna do is fold it up, lock it up, so there isn't gonna be any weight going on to the seed boxes, the row units whatsoever, and that's where, how we're gonna park it for the winter. Uh, the reason being, even when you're in season, I was always told, always make sure you have air, air in these, because if you set it down and there isn't any air in them, what happens is that they can actually tear on the inside and then you just ruined an airbag. And these things, we replaced one in the past and I want to say it was in the $250, $300 range to replace it then and that was two years ago. So, uh, do I like the the airbag system? They're all, it's, all, it's all right. I think I actually prefer it more than the spring system. And as far as the hydraulic downforce, Andrew's trying to did a switch over to hydraulic downforce but the big limiting fact is uh, we don't have the room for them because of our trash whippers and we're not about to go through and change these out anytime soon yet also a uh, question why did we mount the fertilizer tank up on the tongue as opposed to back here on the planter it is weight distribution because we were putting more weight onto the tongue onto the tractor tires the duals as opposed to putting the tank or two separate tanks over the seed boxes. There is a lot going on back here. It's cluttered and you don't need that much more. Either this mounted right over the center, which you can't because the frame 
flexes right here. So you'd have to do, I'd say, what is that, a 200, 200 gallon tank? So what, two 100s on each wing? But here's the problem, you'd almost have to mount it right here. And there's a lot of stuff to, to work around to get it onto the frame. I definitely wouldn't feel right putting all that weight on these wings and potentially excess doing excess wear causing excess wear on these pins on these pins back here i just i wouldn't feel right um really it just to us that's what made the most sense and um we have it that far ahead so it does clear when those arms come around those arms do clear this albeit i don't really really think it's by very much but uh it seems a lot more complicated than the 1760 we had the 7200 we had uh, there's pluses and minuses to technology. Uh, we did not, when dad got this corn planter, it was only used for two years when Calvin's ready to go home and it had no fertilizer on it. So this thing was, was in really awesome condition other than it sat outside for three years when it was traded in. But the advantage to having the liquid starter on the planter, getting that corn plant started the second it's in the ground gets it off and off to the up and off to the races um, it looks a lot better earlier on it gets it out of the ground so much quicker uh, we went without the starter for a year maybe two i think it was two years and we definitely noticed that the corn was coming up a little bit more yellow until the roots were able to get down to the nutrients and the fertilizer and everything else that we just felt like we were we were losing yield by not doing the liquid. Is it harder on the machine? Uh, yeah, it does cause, you get the rusting and all that stuff, no matter how hard you try. Uh, whether or not it helps all that much or not, but I did go through and I coated this pretty healthily with WD-40. Uh, I actually seemed to help last year. Um, you could tell where on the spots that I didn't quite get covered, uh, that there was a little bit more rust. And I really just tried to limit it to where the machine was catching fertilizer when it was being filled or anything else like that and i did learn from the first year that we did this that whenever we went to go fill this we did not fill it all the way to the top uh, the general rule of thumb was right about to this indentation on the tank which is approximately 175 gallons um not gonna lie when that thing is full of full of product and you're bouncing around and you really don't want to do too much bouncing with this full of, full of fertilizer in the first place. Uh, but you're going across the field and between strips and whatever else, and you can feel that liquid sloshing around in that tank. It gets a little bit leery because I'm not 100% certain. We did go and get the high grade rod for, for mounting this tank, but I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I do get a little bit leery about trusting these uh, when that is with that much weight moving around over the tongue like that. So, all right, I guess I better give in because somebody already gave up. So, all right, uh, I hope I answered some questions. If not, try me next time and I'll I'll try to get back to them. Uh, this is pretty well ready to be put away. I just need to to flush it. I'm not gonna lie, it will probably wait another week before I unhook it unhook it uh, because cultivating I'm hoping is gonna be hitting us hot and heavy and we'll try to get as much done as we can uh, the corn this last rain that we got which is why I'm not cultivating right now I'm hoping I can run again tomorrow but the corn really took off from that last rain we had it was kind of cooler cooler this morning but last night or this afternoon tonight uh, about two o'clock on the sun actually did come out it did get warmed up it was like 77 78 and that corn did stretch a little bit i can definitely tell from what it was the other night when i got rained out to to tonight and i do have i don't know if you guys have seen it but i do have about 500 gallons left in that tank that i need to get put on and that's pretty much going to get priority here uh, this ground didn't get any of the the liquid the side dressing, I was pretty much just going through and, well, okay, you talked me into it. Really quick, let's go up and look at what this corn looks like that I that I cultivated the other day. Um, 
The big reason why I went through and cultivated this is because the ground is so hard. Um, it's like concrete. And we were walking through it and looking at it and we just kind of decided, it wasn't on a whim, um, it was walking through it and deciding that the ground needed to be opened up. So that's exactly what we did. And it definitely seemed to help. So this is what the corn looks like. Nice, dark green. Uh, this is cultivated and I can actually feel it. I mean, it is gonna be wet, soft from having some rain on it, but comparing that with what, uh, with what hasn't been cultivated, I can, I can definitely tell. I mean, there's not a lot of give there. All that up through there, where I just was, um, it broke up that crust and it's allowing the moisture to penetrate, albeit, uh, well, albeit probably not as, as much as I really would like it to, but you take what you can get. So, and the soybeans look rough. This is a headland, so that's kind of hard to judge off of, but this is what the soybeans look like. Planted at 120,000 seeds per acre, really starting to perk up compared to what they were. They'll bush out, and they say between 80 and 100 bushel or 100 seeds per acre, you can still get really awesome yields. We have the moisture uh, in the ground. It all depends on how much rain we get in August to really help determine the yield. But if you guys want a really pretty sight, this is this is what Rockville looks like right now. That corn is a nice deep green. We do have two hybrids over there on Big Patch. So you can see the darker green and the lighter green. That's from hybrids, it's not from, well, there's actually one that's actually slightly taller. And I couldn't tell you if it's Dairyland or DeKalb because those are the two hybrids that are over there. But from the looks of this, I'm willing to bet sometime by about noon tomorrow as long as it warms back up again we don't get any more rain um, hopefully i can get going and get back to cultivating so all right that's enough for this video thanks for tuning in thanks for watching take care take it easy keep in touch i'll talk to you guys next time